Hello everybody. Today we're going to work on the flap actuator. So the flap actuator is uh, actually a rod that is connected uh, to the flaps. Be careful here because I already make my first mistake. Um, the actual rods that push down and push the flaps down, uh, they are of course uh, connected to this uh, steel rod with a um, an eye bolt, but you have to insert them first. I didn't do it here, as you can see, but it's so close to the side skin that there's no way to get the bolt in later. So I have to uh, unscrew everything again. So that was stupid because it was specifically stupid because a friend of mine told me that I should do it in that order and I didn't. It's not in the plans so don't forget first put the, the screws in that uh, connect the eyeball to the to the flap rods or else you have to detach everything again. Every, anyway I, I had to detach it anyway because it turned out uh, I need a small uh, shim uh, between both the side uh, hinges. Uh, there's a second mistake I made here. So I drilled all the parts and uh, then I installed everything. Unfortunately there's a kind of a twist in the um, in the motor uh, bracket that I'm working on right now. So and it's it, it, I think it's in the plans, but you shouldn't drill the outside holes of the uh, of the flap actuator bracket. Uh, that that won't work. So follow the plans there. Uh, there was a twist in there. It's not much, but I don't like it. I'm probably going to fix that later. Um. Anyway, I'm going to test the flap motor by connecting it to an old computer power supply and as you can see it works quite nicely also you can see that there are no screws in there and you can also see that there's no way that you can put them in there because it's way too close to the, the outside I didn't see that right now here yet so uh, I figured that out a few, a few weeks later I just fixed it actually uh, a few days ago Okay, so that's it. That's the um, that's the flap actuator. Uh, I'm see if everything fits when closing the um, the tunnel, the pushrod tunnel for the elevators. And I'm working on the to see if the side parts work for the flaps, and they do. Okay, going forward. Um, this is the part where uh, I'm going to install all the panels on the front side to see if, it, if everything fits. So it's not a final uh, attachment yet, it's just seeing if everything fits okay. After having everything match drilled and primed, all the parts, now it should all work. So those are the covers of the fuel lines. And then there's the middle part fuel line should go underneath. I probably have to, I'm probably going to attach my fuel pumps on top of those. So uh, I have to create uh, a cover part for that later. So the, the middle part needs to be elevated just a little bit. So I'm looking for, let's see, some cardboard shims so that it's it's lifted a little bit so I can drill uh, everything. Because later the f there should be fuel, wheel, fuel lines and other stuff uh, going underneath. Okay, that's the part where the fuel selector will be placed. I'm not sure yet if I want to do it this way or set the fuel selector in, in an angle. Uh, because maybe I want to uh, a central console and uh, put it all the way up to the panel. I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Connecting the the cover there to the firewall recess. So you have to drill through holes and that's of course steel. So that's uh, harder to drill than aluminum. 
Here I'm drilling the, the, the side. Uh, so that's why I needed the, 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 the cardboard distant box. And now I have to remove everything so I can insert uh, the um, uh, all the plate nuts in there. There are a lot of plate nuts there because there are all kinds of stuff that you need to be able to unscrew. Uh, covers for fuel pumps and stuff like that. Although I'm probably going to I'm probably going to uh, use other fuel pumps than let's say the standard facet fuel pumps that Vance delivers. I'm going to do a, a video on um, on the engine because I'm also probably not going to take the standard Lycoming uh, 360 engine. I have a different idea, uh, but I will discuss that in a later video. It's not that I necessarily want to experiment, uh, <laughs> but um, I think there are better solutions. Okay, place nuts are now riveted in there. Again, they all need to be flush, so you also need to um, countersink or dimple all the parts. This is too thin material, so you have to dimple anyway. And as I said, there are a lot of a lot of parts in there. It sounds very simple, but uh, it's actually a lot of work. Okay, finishing up. Okay, continuing building my pie in the sky.